Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I want to talk a little bit about how I use a GPS to plan for my backpacking trips when I'm out backpacking and camping. Me personally, I'm using a Garmin Oregon 650 device right here, but fret not if you're not using this actual device or if you're using a cell phone app, which is pretty popular nowadays. Everything I'm about to show you, the tools, the free tools, and the tactics and strategies all of that will work for you on your device as long as, just one caveat, as long as your device or app is capable of importing GPS data files, which is a pretty basic function. I'd say if your device or app doesn't do that, um, maybe look into getting one, but most likely yours can do that. So we're going to go over that today. I'm going to show you how to pre-plan for a trip, create some routes and waypoints and map things out, as well as use your device in the field to record data and then when you're at home how you can kind of polish up that data and save it to share with friends or use it again when you go back to that area so you already kind of have a jump start on routes and camp locations and stuff like that that you may want to revisit i got my laptop here so i'll be switching back and forth on the screens to show you that and first things first we want to jump into here and then we'll load up a web browser and the first thing we want to do is get you running with some software for mapping, route planning, etc. And then this is also what we're going to use to export our GPS data later so you can import it into your device. So we're going to use Garmin's Basecamp. That is a free software by Garmin. And don't worry if you don't have a Garmin device, it'll work just fine for you as well. You can use it. It's totally free. You'll see here it's version 4.7. If you are not using a Garmin GPS or you're using a cell phone app, you're good to go with this version here. However, if you are using an actual Garmin device, I strongly advise you don't use the current version. You go and use the previous version. I, I'll put the details in the video description so we don't get bogged down with that. But basically the short and sweet of it is there's a bug with the latest version 4.7 and you can import maps onto the software and do all your planning but if you want to transfer those map images to your Garmin device it doesn't work so I will put a link in the video description and you can go to the archives and download version 462 again if you're using a cell phone app well you wouldn't be able to transfer map images anyway you would get that directly through your app provider when I'm talking about maps, I'm not talking about the GPS data like tracks and waypoints and all that. I'm talking about this image right here that shows like roads and towns and all that. It's pretty sparse. This is the base map that comes with the software. It's pretty much just has roads, towns, stuff like that. None of the topography and other features that we would want for backpacking. So regardless of whether or not you're planning to transfer maps to your device, even if you're just using a cell phone, you're going to want a better map for doing your planning. So we're going to go and get some free maps. I've already got some pre-installed for the demonstration here. And you'll notice if we switch to this one, now all of a sudden I have much better hiking data. I got some mountains listed and some topography and stuff like that. So to get those, we'll swap back to the browser and you're going to go to a place called gpsfiledepot.com. Again, I'll put links for everything I talk about in the video description. You load it up and you can pick by state. Let's pretend that we're going to Pennsylvania right now. So I'll pull up Pennsylvania. And what I usually do is filter by topo. And when first starting, I would go with editor's choice maps. There are a ton of different maps in here that you can dig into and get crazy with later. Land, ownerships, railroad maps, all kinds of stuff. But for the basics, if I do editor's choice, just about every state in the country is going to have one. In my case, there's two choices. Um, I can either get one of these regional maps, which covers a bunch of areas, or the specific state map. And they are usually slightly different. So I, a lot of times I'll get both and see which one I like. But let's just pretend, you know, you're getting a Pennsylvania topo. So real simple. You're just going to go in and download the installer file right there. And then you'll run that. It'll walk you through it, do all the default stuff. There's nothing really to think about. And the next time you open up Basecamp, you will see that map available in your list of maps. 
So next thing we're going to do is let's pretend we've already chosen. We're going to go to West Virginia, Cranberry Wilderness in the Middle Fork area. What I usually do first, why reinvent the wheel? At least have a starting point. Let's go out on the internet and see if anybody already has shared some GPS data. Sometimes you'll get a real good hit. Sometimes it'll be just a starting point for you. And we'll import that into our software. In this case, I would do Cranberry Wilderness Middle Fork. And let's put some quotes on that just to make it more specific. And now I'm just going to do GPS. Pretty obvious, right? Or that's the pipe symbol. It's actually right above your enter key. In Google syntax, when it hits that, it means or. So GPS or GPX, which is usually the most common file out there that you're going to find. And there you go. We got some hits. Hiking upward, mid-Atlantic hikes, and hiking project, stuff like that. So this, for me, on the East Coast is a great place. Hiking upward. I'm going to click on that. And all kinds of cool information here. They got GDB files, which you can add that to your search terms too, if you'd like. And there's a GPX file. So I'm going to grab that. Of course, when I click it, it comes up as a text file. So let's actually uh, right click that and save link as. And I'll save that to my download folder. So now we have a start point. We're going to go back to the Basecamp software. In Basecamp, you have a, what's called a library. If you just go to my collection, it'll show you everything on the map that you happen to be looking at. But you can create folders. In my, my case, I have West Virginia. I'll make a subfolder called Middle Fork. And now I'm going to make a list. Lists are nice because then when you're in the list, it'll only show you stuff in that list instead of all of your data. And I usually tag it the place that I got, or I might just call it planning. Now I'm simply going to go to Import Into Middle Fork. And right there, you can see there's our GPX file. So we're going to open that up. And the, all these different sites do stuff different. But you can see here they have some waypoints. So there's the parking area. And it looks like I need to load a different map. So I will load part three of my map set. There we go. And now this is a good start point. There's a lot going on here. Some of these are a little busier than others. Um, in this case, there's a ton going on. So if you can go through here and you can remove items or select a bunch and remove if you find that some of these points are not useful to you. Um, he's got some campsites laid out here, which is nice. And a lot of these sites will give you the track data in the form of a route. If you like that, great. I usually just like regular tracks. It works better for me. That's simple. Uh, first thing I do is go here and do create track from selected route. And I get rid of that route. You saw I just did remove from. That'll take it out of the list, but it'll leave it in your collection. If you do delete, it's gone forever. So now I got the middle fork route. And if I double click on it, I can pull it up. I got some data on it. Now I can tell here there is no time data on here. So that tells me instantly this person created this route on their computer. They didn't actually uh, record it live in the field, which means if I go to a graph, yeah, it's empty. So um, there's no elevation data in there. That's fine. I'll show you a, a way in a little bit that we can add elevation data, but it's still a good starting point. I can also in here, I can change the color so I can color code my stuff and I can add notes. So a lot of times I'll go on the forums and stuff. And as I'm researching the trail, someone might post something cool about a campsite or a water source. And I could just cut and paste that right in here. And when I'm on my device, I can go to the notes feature of that waypoint and I can read that when I'm out there. Then what I would do also based on notes is I could go through and let's say uh, someone said there's actually another campsite that's really cool. Um, right after you, uh, maybe a quarter mile after you go past this water crossing here. Just a quick example. So I would measure out, okay, a quarter mile is right around there. So I would go to waypoints and just drop one in and I could call that cool campsite or CS. I can change the icon to whatever my heart desires. 
Um, same thing, you can add notes if you want. And now I have my cool campsite there. So that's a good example of finding a good hit for data as a starting point. But let's say, let's go back to another example. We are planning for a trip to the White Mountains and we don't have any data. So we got to make it ourselves. That's fine. That's what happens a lot. So I'll go back to here. I'll go to Google Maps. And let's say I'm going to the Appalachia Trailhead in New Hampshire. And I found it on the map. Now I just want to get it into my GPS software. So what you do on Google Maps is right click and hit what's here. And now you click this and you have the actual GPS coordinates in two formats that I can cut and paste and put into my software. This is also a good tactic. If I switch to satellite view, and this won't necessarily apply here because the White Mountains are pretty dense, but a lot of times I will go through on satellite images and look for different things like maybe a clearing. I might go through and look and see an opening in the trees. Let's just pretend one is here and I could do the what's here thing and get my coordinates and then plug that into the map just based on aerial imagery. But in our case, we are just marking the trailhead. So let's copy that, go back to Basecamp and we'll just go to find locate coordinates paste it in, control C for copy, control V for paste. And we'll hit recenter. And there it is. Of course, it's not being shown because I didn't load the right map. We'll do that in a second. But I'm gonna hit create web waypoint. Uh, oh, I don't have a folder uh, list in this folder yet. So let's just call it uh, Mount Adams. All right, so now I have a new list called Mount Adams. I got a waypoint. And if I click on it, I can edit it. And let's just say this is the parking lot. And once again, let's switch to part one. All right, so now I got that and I can start planning a route. So one other thing I didn't mention on that GPS file depot site, there's two other uh, downloads I suggest that everybody get, at least in the United States. And that is going to be called My Trails is one, and the other is called Trails 100. So download those right there, and it's going to give you a lot of good trails. Uh, I find My Trails has more, or most of the trails I encounter, and if it doesn't, then it's hopefully in Trails 100, which has a little less, but it works. So if I go to Maps now, and I do My Trails, now I have a bunch of trails listed on the uh, page and I can go to the hand tool and move around. One thing you'll notice is in the software it's only capable of down, um, displaying one map at a time. So I lost my topo data but I can see the uh, trails. In your device, at least in mine on the, uh, the Oregon and the other Garmin, most of the other Garmins, there is a function where it'll layer the maps. So in my actual device, I can see the topo data and the trails at the same time. In the software, I just have to bounce back and forth, but that's okay. So now we will go to tools and let's do a track. So I'll go in here and basically you can just come through and each time you click, it makes a point and you can trace one of these trails. So let's just pretend I did that all the way down here. It'll be a short hike. And obviously you can put more or less effort into tracing and it'll be more or less accurate. When I'm done, double click, or I'm sorry, right click and it's done. And now I have my track and I can label that Adam's hike or whatever. Change the color. I usually prefer pink because that's a color that's almost never used on the maps you're gonna be using. Red is usually trails, blue is water, etc. But that's up to you. Now I got that. And if I open it up, I can look. There's no elevation data still. But we'll get to that. You will be able to at least see the distance. 1.6 miles. So that's good to know. However, a downside to this is it's time consuming. You have to go in there and trace. It's not going to be super accurate unless you spend a ton of time. And like I said, there's no elevation data. So... There is another website that I suggest you go to in between Basecamp and this site called CalTopo. You will be hooked up. So we're going to go into CalTopo. 
Um, if you've never used it before, you can create an account. You can actually just log in real easily using a Google account or Facebook, whatever your preference. In my case, I did my Google account. I just set one up. And when you click on it, you can save your maps in here. So I'm just going to load this one. It pulls up the Appalachian Trailhead. I already made a waypoint earlier. And the way I did that was you just go to New Marker. And you can choose an icon. Maybe you're doing some skiing that day. Change the color. Give it a name. There it is. And you got yourself a waypoint. But we're going to do a track. So I'm going to zoom way in on there. And I will point one other thing out. On the side here, the base map is usually Map Builder Topo. That's fine, but you can switch it. Depending on your area, this might be useful, might not. I usually like Forest Service 2016. And that, once it loads in, there we go, looks a lot more like a trail map you might be used to. You also have the ability to stack layers. Um, there's all different choices. You could go into uh, some aerial imagery and then use this slider to set the opacity and blend that in. So that's an option. CalTapo has a ton of stuff. I'm not going to do a full tutorial. I'm just going to show you the basics of what I do to create a route. So anyway, we'll go back in here. And now we're going to hit new line. And now you see there's these yellow overlays that pop up for all these trails. They're routable, which is cool. So I'm going to click on the start here. Now I can draw, draw straight lines like this, right? But again, that's kind of like we had before, not too accurate. I hit the escape key and that backs up one layer. So if I do something that I don't like it, just keep hitting escape until you get back to where you were. So in my case, I'm starting over and you'll notice it sticks to the trail. So I can click at any point and just go along. Uh, maybe I want to take a turn here, go down here and I just work my way through it and make my route you can also it's smart so let's say i don't want to go through all that i just want to go all the way up to oh i don't know madison hut zoom in on that and let's just click over here make sure it sticks click with the left mouse button and now you'll notice if i zoom back out and i'm going to use the right mouse button and hold down and i can do a drag function You'll notice it already automatically routed. As far as I can tell, that's based on just the shortest mileage possible. Um, that may not be the easiest hike, right? Because it's not taking elevation into account, but it's, it's an easy way a lot of times to save time, especially right now we're in a very dense trail area. So you probably want to be more specific and tell it where to go. But a lot of times in a less populated trail area, um, you can just click both ends of where you want to go and it's going to route it all right down for you. So, now, I'm just going to route my way all the way back to the car. Double click. And route is created. If I want to edit it again, I can go back in by clicking on it there. Edit. I'm going to change that color to pink. And the name. Blue Pike. And now I have my file. Me personally... What I'll do a lot too is I will break my routes into days just to make it easier for me to plan. Um, so in that case, I'll create a couple days worth of data. All right, I created one to this campsite and now create another one, Mount Adams, and back down. Let's say we camp there all the way back to the car. All right, so I got three different colors for each day and that looks a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure to save this. Well, it looks like it was already saved. So that's good. Otherwise, there would be a save button right here. You just hit that and it'll come up and it'll allow you to name it and all that stuff. But that's already done. So we're going to export now. Download a GPX file. It's going to give you options for all this stuff. That looks good. So we're just going to hit export. I get my download file here. And now I can go back into Basecamp 
and let's delete this stuff we already did. And remember, if I remove, it just goes away from the list, but stays in my collection. If I delete it, it's gone forever. That's fine. I'm going to delete permanently. Yes. Now, file, import into the Mount Adams list. And there's my presidential range GPX file that I just created. And there it is. Looks like it actually took the color coding away, but that's fine. Done. So now I got a much more accurate route. You can see it actually, especially when I zoom in, now it varies a little bit from my trails, but more accurately, you can tell the way it winds there is gonna move. And when I go to the data for that track, there is probably a more accurate mileage description there. Still no elevation data. From what I can see on CalTopo, as of right now, it's just, it doesn't um, uh, export the elevation data. So I'm going to tell you a third site that I like to use, and that's going to solve that problem right now. So I'm actually going to delete those tracks as well, because we're going to recreate them. So we're just going to go to a free tool called GPS Visualizer. And on this page, you can see I can select a file. And right there, there's our presidential range GPX. So open that. Output is a GPX file. That's fine. Convert. Then you get this page here. And you're just going to do click to download. And there is our GPX file with elevation that we can import. Now, one thing that I've bumped into with this, it seems to have been no problem this time, but occasionally I get an error saying the file size was too big. Usually when this happens, it's because I had a ton of waypoints in that data, which we don't need anyway. We're just looking to add elevation data to the tracks. So remember earlier when I said on the export page, you can select what you export. If that was your case, if you have a bunch of other frivolous stuff in there, just choose your track data and if you have really big tracks, I haven't run into this, but if you do, you could individually do file outputs for each track and then run it through the visualizer and you're good to go. But in our case, we were fine. So we're going to go back to Basecamp and now we'll go file import into Mount Adams. And unfortunately, I forgot to change the file name to something more uh, reasonable, but you could change that to with elevation or whatever. But we'll open that up, and now we get our track data back in. We'll have to color code them again, but that's not the end of the world. And if I click on it now and go to graph, you can actually see I have elevation data. And for this one, get elevation data for today. You'll also notice on the uh, map here, as I scroll along, I can now see myself moving through the trip and... I find that helpful to kind of visualize things. And for day three, same thing, all downhill it seems. So you're good to go with that. Now I should mention also in the Cal Topo, they do have, cancel that, some cool tools. If you click on these, you can see some profile. Um, it's actually a little nicer than the uh, version on Basecamp. But the downside to this is it's only for pre-planning, really. Once you're out in the field with the other version, the nice thing is this is baked into the track. So on your device, assuming it's capable, and it should be, you can actually get a preview of what kind of elevation is coming up on your track and whatnot. So now we got our elevation data in there. We got some waypoints. You know, like I showed earlier, we can create different waypoints for campsites and stuff like that. And we'll go through, you know, maybe you want to add... You saw somebody put some notes up and they said there was a cool water source here. So, you know, I usually just do a little faucet and water one, all that stuff. So you would go through, add all the stuff you want to. And one other thing I'm going to mention is you can break these tracks up or combine them as well. So a lot of times I would like to see an elevation profile or data for the entire trip. So you could combine them. So I'll select these 
and I'll hit duplicate. And now I have my copies right there and I will cut that and go down to a different list. Now you see everything disappeared there because I'm in a different list view. You haven't lost your data, but it's just filtering it for you. And I'll paste here. Now I have my copies. And if I select all these, I can join. Make sure the order is correct. Hit OK. It's going to ask if you want to delete the other tracks. I, I usually say no. I still want them. And rename this full route or whatever you want. And now I have data for the entire trip. 8.1 miles. I get the total ascent and descent. Uh, another graph of the entire trip. So now you can see all the way up to Adams and down. So that's pretty cool. You can also split tracks. Uh, maybe you want to change these tracks that you made earlier. I'm going to remove these from this list to make this a little clearer. So let's say you just have a full route or you want to alter another route. You can click it right here and do split track here. And now it's created separate tracks. You can also add to a track. Maybe you found something online, but you want to change it a little bit. So you would just go to tools and new track. Zoom in here and let's say I want to do an out and back over here. Check things out. And uh, no, no, I was doing a little loop and then I came back and uh, then I went to camp. Something like that. So that's done. Now I would just select those two tracks like we did before and do the same join. And then we've supplemented our track. One other thing sometimes I like to do is maybe I decide as I'm planning that I want to reverse the route of the whole trip. Not a problem at all. I'm just going to go to these tracks and I will do an invert to each one. And of course, then you would rename them. I'm not going to do that now, but you'll see now that the little arrows are going the other way. My data has changed, right? Ascent and descent has inverted as well. My graph is inverted and the direction my little guy has inverted as well. So that's cool. At this point, I am ready to export this for use on my device and hit the trail and be all ready to go. So for me using a Garmin, it's super simple. I got my device plugged in right over here. So it's showing up here. So I'm just going to go back to my list, go to device, send to device. There's my Garmin. Click OK. And now when I scroll back down, you can see it got a little check mark. And now all that data is also on my device and I'm ready to hit the trail. If you are not using a Garmin, if you're on a cell phone or another device, very simple as well. You're just going to go to your list, go file, export, export Mount Adams. And then you're going to get this screen here. You can choose a file format, do whatever works for your device. GPX is pretty common, so it should work. KML is good for Google Earth, which is fun as well. I actually have it running here so you can see um, what did I do here. This was when I was planning some trip. A while ago, I suppose. And now you can see your stuff in Google Earth, which is kind of fun when you're planning a trip as well to uh, look at it that way as a pre-planning thing. But anyway, we're going to export this as a GPX file, Mount Adams for fall or whatever you want. And we'll save that. And it's done. At this point, just um, take that and copy it onto the memory card for your device, if it's a physical one, or in the case of a cell phone, I'd say just email that file to yourself, go on your phone, download it, and then import it into your app, however you are supposed to do that on your particular app. Then you're ready to go. You show up at the trailhead. One thing I will suggest, a little, little tip, um, disconnect your device after that, boot it up at home right afterwards. Just triple check that your waypoints are actually on there. It's not fun to show up and realize that didn't work. And then also for you Garmin users out there, 
uh, this is something I've botched before. Make sure you've actually sent your map images, if you've downloaded some, make sure you've actually sent them from the software to your device. You only have to do it once. Once it's on there, it's there until you delete it. But uh, I didn't show that before. But if you're using a Garmin, you're just going to go to Maps, Install Maps. This comes up. And my list is empty. But if there was anything on your Basecamp software that wasn't on your GPS, it would be in this list right here. And I would just click continue and it would install them and I'd be good to go. In the case of a phone app, you're just going to use whatever is pre-installed. Just make sure it's already downloaded onto your app, if not already. Then once you're on the trail, you can pull up all this stuff and you'll be good to go. What I usually do now, personally, I actually record all my data extensively because I put it up on my website. So each time I do a trip and a trip video, I'll also post the GPS data and that's on my trip data or um, in the post itself. So my use is a little more extensive when I'm out there on the trail. So I'm recording the data anyway. I usually suggest if you have the function, and you should, on your GPS to record your route as you go, even though you have your pre-planned route in there, still hit record. You'll have a constant little breadcrumbs going on, right? And you can compare your current route to the route that you're supposed to be doing. And uh, it's just kind of nice. And then when you get home, and you import your data. And of course that will whack your battery a little more. So keep that in mind. Um, that's why I do like a dedicated device. But while you're out there, you'll have the track being recorded. And then also as you go, depending on the way your device is set up um, on mine, I have a dedicated button that I press and it drops a waypoint and I can mark any campsites I see for future trips, water sources, etc. Usually to save battery life, I keep my, I don't go too deep on typing out very specific names or writing notes. Um, I might change the icon, that's about it, and maybe a short name. Sometimes I don't even rename it because I'm going to get home from the trip. It's going to be fresh in my mind, and then I can polish up that data for a future um, trip out there. So what I would do is when I come home, I got the GPS data on, in my case, on my device. If you're using an app or another type of device, use the export function function on that and bring it back into your computer just like this. So let's say, let's create a new list. Uh, Mount Adams actual or whatever. It's up to you how you organize it. But then I'm just going to do import into just like we did earlier when we found that GPS data off that website. Same thing. Now you got your data in here and you can tweak it however you like just using the ways that I showed earlier. And then once you're doing that, you have the option to resend it to your device or export it to another GPX file. And now you're complete. In my case, when I get back from a trail, once I've imported it to my computer and it's in the Basecamp software, I delete it from my GPS. I used to not do that. And my GPS got full. It had a limit on the amount of waypoints that could be in there anyway. It also makes your uh, device or app get kind of confusing. I like to just have on my device the trip that I'm about to do so that when I go to look at my list of waypoints, I'm not seeing stuff for like Colorado when I'm in West Virginia. But that's just a personal thing, but a little tip. And that's really about it, at least for what I'm going to discuss today. Both of these uh, services, the Basecamp software as well as CalTopo, like I said, are very full featured. There's tons you could do. I, you could do hours on either one, but that's pretty much the basics of it to get you started and out there on the trail having fun. If you have any tips out there that you would like to share, maybe things I could be doing better or other ways to add elevation data, etc., I'd love to hear that. Please share that in the comment section below with either myself or the other uh, viewers out there. And I hope you found this helpful. So till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there. <laughs>